So the question before us is, what does the multiplier look in action on the aggregate supply and aggregate demand curve? We're focusing on the aggregate demand curve because the multiplier in all of its forms, uh, both the spending multiplier and the tax transfer multiplier, work through the action of spending. Um, so since spending is embedded in the aggregate demand rather than the aggregate supply curve, um, it makes sense that we'll be looking at the aggregate demand curve. And we know the aggregate demand curve is made up of four different distinct components of spending. You've got consumer spending, you've got business investment spending, you've got government spending, and then of course you've got net export spending. And as a reminder, the aggregate demand curve shows the level of total spending of all those four components at every price level. So if you've got price level of 90, um, then you've got an aggregate total aggregate spending C plus I plus G plus net exports of 600. Now we know there's a list of things that will shift the aggregate demand curve including consumer expectations, business expectations, wealth, etc. But it's worth noting if there's a big change in one of these types of spending that of course will shift your aggregate demand curve as well and that's what we're looking at right now. So let's assume the government increases its spending by, let's say, 100, what will be the impact? Will the total increase in aggregate demand be limited to 100, or will it be something bigger, considering that every dollar of increase spending ends up in somebody's pocket, and a portion of that gets spent and respent and respent throughout the economy? Well, we suspect it's the latter, and indeed, aggregate demand will increase by more than 100. To figure out exactly how much, we need to know a little bit more information. Now there's two policy multipliers here. Uh, the first multiplier is the spending multiplier, and that is defined as 1 over the MPS. So the inverse of the marginal propensity to save. There is also a tax and transfer multiplier for when the government policy is a change in taxes or transfers, which are a little bit less direct of a way to get money into the economy and so the effect is a little smaller. There's a separate screencast for the tax and transfer multiplier. So let's say we're given information that the MPS in this economy is 0 0.25. That would make our multiplier, our spending multiplier, 1 divided by 0 0.25 or 4. And what does this 4 number mean? It means for every one dollar increase in spending or decrease in spending, total aggregate demand will move by four dollars. And the intuition is simply one person's spending is another person's income. And so spending gets multiplied through the economy. So now we're ready to see the effect on the aggregate demand curve. For a given price level, um, an increase in government spending by a hundred, so let's um, move spending here rightwards by 100 units, is going to create um, more additional spending so that for every 100 increase actually we expect the total amount of spending to have increased to a thousand. And that's going to be true at every price level. The new aggregate demand curve will be uh, $400 to the right of the old aggregate demand curve. So an initial increase of $100 yields an aggregate demand curve that's to the right of the old aggregate demand curve by 400. And same with a leftward shift, so a decrease in government spending by 100 will of course play out as a much larger decrease over time after all is said and done. And that's how you work the aggregate demand curve with a multiplier.